Oh, I'll tell you what, if Frodo Baggins had had one of these, wouldn't have needed three films. Hello and welcome to the Munro Mark I. Quite simply, the most extreme electric 4x4 ever made. In fact, forget electric, this might be the most hardcore off-roading vehicle that you can buy with number plates. Defenders, Range Rovers, Land Cruisers, they are soft-edged, noddy cars compared to one of these. And in this video today, we're not going to be doing what we normally do. We're not discussing efficiency. We're not going to talk about where this vehicle lands on the great touchscreens versus physical buttons discourse of our time. No, we're going to do some Munro stuff, like driving up cliffs. Surely not. That's a cliff, you. Straight up, better gas. Straight up. And maybe if we have time, liberating a few small nations from the clutches of fascism. And to tap it all off, we've come to Scotland on the one day of summer. Look at this. So, let's go exploring, shall we? This is the Munro Mark I. This is Scotland. And this is the Fully Charged Show. We know you love the Fully Charged Show. So why not come to one of our global live shows in 2022 and 2023? Up next, it's our UK South show at Farnborough International, where the Munro Mark I will be on display. Want to see it for yourself? Get your tickets now. So, welcome then to the Pride of Scotland. This is the Munro Mark I, Scottish designed, Scottish built, here in Scotland. Uh, it's basically the first Scottish car in four decades. There's one other, it's called the Raptor. It's like a little kit car, sports car thing built in very low volume. But aside from that, this is the first Scottish car in 40 years. And it's quite a thing. This is not the kind of high riding SUV that is gonna spend most of its time zipping around Hampstead doing school runs and then every now and then driving up a slightly icy hill. No, 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 no. The Munro founders have very clearly said in the press literature for this vehicle, if you do more than 90% of your driving on road, go elsewhere. It's not for you, your big baby. In fact, if your job does not involve frequently driving up cliffs and mandate that you have to have a flare gun on you at all times, this is probably not for you. And yes, indeed, this vehicle is mostly looking at commercial customers, mountain rescue, that sort of jazz. But on top of being extremely focused on one specific job, the Munro is also simple ever so simple. And that simplicity of design and manufacture has enabled it to be quite reasonably priced for what it is. This off-roading monster, this go-anywhere adventure vehicle, starts at around £60,000, which isn't cheap, but it is a pretty competitive price for something that can do what this can do. If you look at the existing crop of hardcore road-legal SUVs that can go anywhere near where this can go, it's a lot more than that. Other thing worth noting, production beginning this year, they're gonna try and build 50 of these. And by 2027, they want to ramp production up to 2,500 units per year. So low volume, but this is no kind of one-off specialty. They really are gonna build a fair few of these things. And there are other models to come as well. Time to do some off-road driving. I am pretty much the first person outside of Munro and Munro customers to drive this vehicle. It's the only one in existence. It's fairly priceless. This is a little bit scary. Happily, I've got Hugh next to me, who is one of the greatest living off-roaders uh, on planet Earth, has actually designed most of this off-road course himself, so knows exactly where we're going, and frustratingly is funnier and better looking than me, so we've stuck a mic on him. But no camera here, just a mic. Is that okay? It's all right. Uh, the, the bit about being the greatest off-road driver in the world is a little bit over the top. But Scottish renowned. Scottish renowned, there we go. Off-road trainer. Uh, ah, there it is. And hot with the chicks. That, you know, okay, but other than that, other than that, very modest as well. Yeah, absolutely. All right, so here we go then. First little taste of the off-road. Okay. So just come nice and wide and make sure not too wide that we fall down our toe. Yeah. Just make sure the back of the road Clear this log. Ooh. Sorry, it's just a tree stump. And then pull it around to the right. Oh, I see. Ah, oh, there it is. There's that tree stump. Yep, yeah. found it. Across ah. the right. A little bit up, but not too much. And a little bit of gardening there. 
Now, something I've very quickly learned today is that doing good presenting while doing some fairly extreme off-roading is actually quite hard. So I'm going to share some thoughts with you now as we're on a nice little gentle bit in between two of the gnarly sections. There's been moments during this course today where you approach something like a medium-sized tree stump or a small crater and you kind of grit your teeth and you brace for impact and then, and then it's behind you and it, nothing happened. The off-road capability is beyond anything I've ever experienced. The combination of the four-wheel drive, the immense levels of grip, the huge ground clearance, it is just, it's a monster off-road. But what's really surprising to me is just how confidence-inspiring it is. Because it's such an intimidating-looking vehicle, because it's such a focused piece of machinery, you would think it would be quite scary to operate, that driving it well would require a very specific set of skills. Honestly, any Dumbo with hands and feet could get this thing up your average mountain face, as far as I'm concerned. And obviously that confidence comes in part from the fact that you quickly realise this thing could drive up a sheer sheet of ice if it was so inclined. But it's also coming from the visibility, which is phenomenal thanks to the boxy shape. I know where the bonnet ends is the end of the car. Likewise, I looked through that piece of glass at the back, that's where the back of the car is. But it also comes from a really, really slow steering rack. You've got to do a lot of steering to make anything at all happen to those front wheels. And what that allows you to do is be really precise with the angle that you're putting into the front wheels and make really tiny adjustments midway through a really nasty bit of off-roading. But then on top of all of that, you have this last resort. If you get yourself in a sticky situation, you just press a little harder on that throttle and this wall of torque just materializes out of nowhere and pushes you through whatever you are stuck in. It's astonishing. Now, normally at this part of the video, I do some sort of design walk around, but uh, well, there, there isn't any. There is no design on this vehicle. It's all function. So let's focus on that, shall we? This is the front. It's very flat. That's going to be a recurring theme of this uh, walk around. Flat panels, as we established when we filmed the Citroen Ollie the other day, are cheaper. They're cheaper to manufacture, they're cheaper to replace. So this is helping keep the cost down. These are the headlights. That's about the end of the design walk around for the front of the vehicle. Can we talk about this overhang? Look how much vehicle there is in front of that front wheel. I make that <laughs> two inches tops. And what that does is enable the Munro to have an approach angle of 84 degrees. 84 degrees. Let's just, let's just make sure we all understand what that means. 90 degrees is straight. That's a, that's a cliff face. <laughs> it's really cool. If you drive this down an 84 degrees cliff face, the wheels will touch the floor before the nose. That's what that means. Yeah, round the side, I mean, would you just look at this thing? Is it not the meanest, baddest vehicle you ever did see? And again, simplicity is apparent everywhere. There's no big, long spec sheet for the Munro where you choose your panoramic sunroof and your heated camera wing mirrors. In fact, speaking of wing mirrors, you can't even adjust these from inside the car. You need to move your mirror. There you go. There, there are virtually no options available on this vehicle. There are three versions with different battery and motor size, you can have with or without air suspension. That's sort of it. What more do you need? As far as specs, the entry level model gets a 56 kilowatt hour usable battery. That gives you up to 141 miles of range anywhere, which incidentally means that it'll do more than two miles to the kilowatt hour, which would be quite staggering, to be honest with you, considering, considering. Torque, 443 foot pounds, 295 brake horsepower. The entry level car is front wheel drive only. And then the, no, just kidding. It's full time four wheel drive, all the time four wheel drive. Naturally, we've got locking differentials. Those come as standard. And then the top spec version, that gives you a little bit more range. 75 kilowatt hour usable battery, up to 190 miles of range. You get more power, more torque. That one will do naught to 60 in under five seconds, which is a frightening concept, frankly. But power, torque, those are road-going vehicle numbers. We don't care about those here. We care about three and a half tons of towing capacity on the top spec version. We care about 48 centimeters of ground clearance, 48 centimeters, or if you prefer, 
80 centimeter wading depth. You can drive this thing through damn near a meter of water and nothing bad will happen. Have a look at this boot. I don't have exact literage for you, but it's it's bloody massive. It's it's the entire size of, it's, it's that big. It's that big, that's how big it is. It's like a van back here. And this really speaks to the design philosophy of this vehicle. We've just got hardwood panels, coating all surfaces. If you scuff something or scratch it, you can just unscrew that bit of wood, pop another one in. And then we've got these adjustable tie down hooks everywhere that you can move around, carabiners on the wall. This is ultra, ultra functional and just so cool. And listen to this, listen to this. Oh my goodness. Now, as we drop down into this very, very, very steep little section here, two things that are really helping me. Number one, the fact that there is no overhangs at all on this car, none. Number two, regen braking, which we always think is a efficiency feature. It gives you a little bit more range, but it's also very handy off road when it comes to hill descent, just slowing the car down as you're going down something really steep so that you keep it all nicely under control. Something that really pleases me about the existence of the Monroe is it's another category of vehicle now where the ultimate expression of it is electric. I love that the fastest family saloon car is electric. I love that the best small city runabout is electric. And now, the finest, most extreme off-roader that you can buy with number plates, that's electric too. And I think it's all the better for it. Not only does that instant torque really, really just work well on loose surfaces and lend itself to off-roading, but as you're driving through all this beautiful nature, it's quite nice to know that we're not hurting it, polluting it, disturbing it. Granted, I did squash a lovely patch of daffodils earlier, but ah, they got in my way. It is worth noting and acknowledging for the camera, this is very much still a prototype that I'm driving here. There is plenty of work still to go into this vehicle. I can see lots of 3D printed panels knocking about. The drivetrain is quite loud, as you can hear, and it's a bit juddery when you're in low range mode. The suspension, Hugh assures me, needs lots of tweaking, although it seems pretty nailed to me. I don't imagine it's gonna get all that much more refined over the course of these final fettles and tweaks because refinement is not really what they're going for here. Okay, the windows will open, that will be nice, but mostly the additional tweaking will be focused around making it even better off-road. It's a scary thought. I'll tell you what, it's ever so simple in here. If you're expecting a big pano sunroof and a sea of touchscreens, then you're very silly billy. None of that in here. This is designed to be operated wearing thick, heavy gloves. It's designed to be mended using nothing but a hammer and a can-do attitude. In fact, Munro have designed this vehicle to last 50 years. That is part of the design brief. And they've also uh, included the sort of ability to fiddle with it, modify it, repair it yourself without voiding the warranty. They really want owners to just buy this, take it away and live with it for half a century without really having to do much. And keeping it really, really simple is key to that. So what do you get? Well, here is a steering wheel. There are two pedals just down there. These are the little air vents. You can have less air, more air, hot air or cold air. And then everything here is to do with the off-roading. So this is for your low range or high range gearbox. Um, that's your off switch, that's your handbrake, that's your big red, it's all gone horribly wrong button. Prototype feature only, that won't be there on the production vehicle. And that really is about it, drive selector. We don't even have a stalk here for selecting forward or backwards. It's three buttons. This is forward, this is neutral, this is reverse. Lovely, chunky, tactile feel to everything that you press. Everything feels like it's going to last 50 years because it's designed to. And obviously this is extreme utilitarianism. If you were looking for something to run around town in and use as a daily, this would be a bit much or a bit little, if you see what I mean. But sitting here, I'm very aware of how little I miss from your typical cushy modern car. How much more than this do you really need? I've got aircon. I've got heated seats. I can see out the window. I've even got, look at this. We've got two domestic 
power ports down here so you can plug in your laptop and you know track the person that you're trying to rescue from a forest or whatever it is mountain rescue people do for a living i'm not entirely sure rescue from mountains i'm guessing back seats there are three of them that's quite nice a proper full-time five-seater as you can imagine in these quite narrow seats you do have to be fairly thin of ass to sit back here but they're comfier than they look you are very upright so headroom is not completely limitless i am touching that a little bit but it's impressive it certainly is boxy back here and again just look how ultra ultra simple it is what have we got there's no usb charge ports there's no heated seats back here couple of vents for the hot or cold air and a big easy to hose down plastic mat under your feet in fact i think you probably could clean the inside of this car with a jet washer if you were inclined and my guess is if you want to remove the seats well look there's two bolts there there's two more there pop those out you've got a giant go anywhere van simple Oh, that's a lot of angle. Yeah. That's a lot of angle. That's a very yeah, steep hill. Comes round. Get the with the... Good lord. Good lord. Oh my god, that was so easy. So, the Munro Mark 1, what do we think? Well, look, I don't claim to be an expert on off-roading stuff, but even I could confidently tell you, you would struggle to find terrain anywhere on planet Earth that you couldn't quite cheerfully drive up in that thing with one hand while holding a very hot, very full cup of tea in the other hand. It's downright embarrassing just how easy extreme off-roading becomes in the Munro Mark 1. And what I love most about it is its simplicity, just how focused it is on the one task that it's designed to perform. It's an extreme example of something that I really, really want to see more of in modern car design, just giving you what you need and nothing else, not inflating the price with a load of extra toys and touchscreens that you don't actually want. And here's a hot take to end on. I put it to you that that is a truer spiritual successor to the old Land Rover Defender than the new Land Rover Defender. And that is why companies that currently rely on fleets of old defenders, like power companies, like Mountain Rescue, are tripping over themselves to order a bunch of these. So there you have it, the Munro Mark I, the pride of Scotland. Ah, it's, it's a shame I almost made it a whole video without doing that. Never mind. Please make sure to like and subscribe. And if you have been, thank you for watching.